from KC, St. Louis will root for you until you fight somebody from St. Louis. So you've heard the venue backing both of these players on their runs here to the top four. But now that they're meeting in loser semifinals, I think the building knows who they want to win. If you like Death Spade, make some noise. Oh, there was a little bit of noise. But if you like AK, let me hear it. I hope that went through the mic. Closer than I would have thought, actually, believe it or not. But it's once the stocks get taken that we'll start to see the action here. Bayonetta versus Snake. If you are new to Smash Brothers and don't know what's going on, I don't blame you. Some fireworks, some afterburners, some grenades, everything on the table between these two. And you're pointing out how AK is the second seed of this tournament and Death Spade all the way down at 23rd. You know what you wouldn't expect is that the last two times Death Spade and AK fought, Death Spade actually won. So this head-to-head -head proving to be a little bit rough for AK. Let's see what he's learned. This is a guy who really has his nose to the grind at all times, right? He goes home, he studies the footage, and he tries to bring something else. He also has an incredible mindset, but not an incredible recovery there from Apollo Kage. The first stock gonna go the way of Death Spade. Not too comfortably. Again, Bale, very light. We're seeing a lot of hurt today. And there it is. Just like that, it's back to even. Yeah, that up tilt will get it done against most characters, but usually not at that percent. And, you know, that's the really interesting thing about Snake in this matchup is, oh my gosh, the grenade not just long enough. Kind of odd there. I thought there was an opportunity, a little meat left on the bone that time by Death's Fade, but because Bayonetta is so light and all these grenades do just a little bit of chip damage, you have to be that much more careful with how you hit Snake. And Apollo Kage has been pretty much for the past few months, if not longer, really preferring to tech chase on platforms with the C4 stick. You saw it sticking around for so long, transferring between Snake and Bayonetta right there. I feel like that's gonna be a huge factor, especially with how much Bayonetta loves to play high up in the air. And if that comes true, you can call me Max Domus. But for now, we're sitting and waiting through this extremely close game one. Death's made opening things up with a bang, but since crawling to a halt, yeah, and the stock that was taken there was at a pretty low percentage for Snake, so we have yet to see Death Spade prove that they can take out this Snake at a reasonable percent, low profiling it there. Apollo Kage, if you read that, you are a legend, but again, that C4 that you called out fires it a little bit early, but at 104, any good hit from Snake here might send us to a game two. Yeah, well, just throwing that up till out as a bit of a heat check, and the witch time not going to last long enough for Death Spade to get up close and personal. Whoa! Just, wow, all right, never mind. <laughs> one off the top, one off the bottom here. And now we'll see how are you getting through there again. Another witch time not going to do a whole lot for Death Spade in this scenario. Once again, nothing doing going forward. And you know that the up tilt coming out there, the grab whiffing by just a touch. Such a big committal in that situation. And it's so difficult for Bayonetta, who's such a mobile character, to play around these grenades. We see the witch time obviously coming to play, right? The hitboxes that detonate on a very reliable, consistent two and a half second timer can be a bit of witch time bait. But there's so much else going on that if AK doesn't leave those around in a sloppy fashion, Deathspade is not going to find openings like that. And that's something that I think we saw him clean up toward the end of the game. That said, it was still a factor. So we'll see what Deathspade's able to do just to play around these insane tools Snake has. He can sometimes uh, have them work against him. Well, it's the first thing you have to figure out against Snake, right? It's not how do I hit him, it's how do I hit him properly and correctly because if you trade damage over and over with Snake as a character as light as Bayonetta, or frankly, as most characters, you're eventually gonna end up on the wrong side, but we get a clean opening here, a clean 26 to start it out, and you said Witch Time Bait, I think we're seeing it again. Yeah, Death Spade just counting wrong right there though, swinging the Witch Time before the grenade blew up, and it looks like it's not facing him at all as we see the grenade actually reset the combo on AK here. Wow, even through the air dodge, Death Spade keeps it going north of 120% at this point. Oh, that was almost fatal. Uh, Death Spade's patience in midair is unbelievable. You might think that Bayo is all run in and get the true combo here, but sometimes if you read the defensive option, you can find even more there. Waiting out the spot touch, but it's still not enough. Has not yet figured out the timing. That's the downside to Witch Time, right? If your opponent is actionable because you countered a projectile instead and they have their shield up, they'll get more invincibility from their dodge. Of course, they'll also have more lag after it, but so far Death Spade has not shown too much accuracy in terms of punishing that vulnerability. Unbelievable again there, the slight duck, the move forward. You put the grenade out, we fall within the key to the whole way through. Prove to me you can get past it. You do not pass the test. That is literally the matchup check off the stage. If you can get around the Nikita, if you can clank it out with your recovery, you're looking good. Otherwise, it's almost certain death. Oh, and there we go, the shield staying up. Death Spade not resorting to the grab. And I think that's been his downfall a couple times here when he's landed these witch times. Just 
go for it. It's not your most rewarding option, but it does beat shield. Yeah, it beats shield, and maybe now the next piece of it is instead reacting to what Apollo Kage has been doing when the Witch Time does land. That time, that smash attack came out a little bit later to react to what Apollo Kage was doing. 107%, another one of those will certainly do the job. Despay not able to land cleanly, launched off the stage again. Tossing out a back air is Apollo Kage as well. All the traps, all the tricks, looking for an up tilt to end this. Yeah, three explosions back to back to back in that same spot. Two grenades on the C4 going off. Apollo Kage, he's a cool guy. He doesn't look at explosions. He had his back turned for all that. And again. <laughs> This time, though, Death Spade getting the opening. Okay, using the grenade, allowing it extra time to reset. But no, off the top, some good DI from Apollo Kage is going to keep him hanging on just a little longer. No, but that tells me exactly that Death Spade is willing to, again, wait for when these grenades are coming. That means you have track of when it's going. What's the follow-up going to be? Just a little bit too low. Bayo ducking underneath the entirety of an F-Tilt, sending the other way to close it out. Apollo Kage, any of these grenade trades could mean big damage, but instead, now Death Spade has finally figured it out, a witch time leading to a kill. Yeah, that time AK actually let his shield down, maybe expecting Death Spade to adjust and go for a grab, but no. Death Spade sticking to all reliable, finally works out this time. Whoa, Nair, Sticky, up smash, dash stack, what's going on? No, <laughs> I'm scared. That Mom, was can you come pick me up on that ballpark village? That was half of Snake's arsenal being used right there to try to close things out and even managed to get the C4 in a great spot there. But credit to Deathspade who has weathered this storm and actually taken the percentage lead here at the end. What is the follow-up gonna be? Following Snake, not able to close it down, but landed is holding your grenade. Where are you going? They up tilt, you knew it was coming out here. They're walking, oh, they're not pushing buttons at all. The confidence here from both players, honestly. And you can tell they have met in bracket just by the way they're treating each other in some of these close exchanges. AK though, now losing the match in terms of percent, but it doesn't matter. Snake, so strong, so durable. Gonna clutch that one out with the up tilt from the back of the heel. I mean, it's insane stuff here that we are seeing here so many times. Those interactions could have gone a different way. Max, there is nothing cooler than when after incredible attacks being thrown back and forth, both characters just kind of walk around and size each other up in the heat of the moment, one step ahead in each case. Definitely a sign of a brilliant player, right? And a, a composed player. Look at that, man. I thought the heels were Bayo's thing. Snake got the Doc Martens on, though. We know you're really 5'8". <laughs> 5'8 with an IQ of 180, apparently, if right. you follow the Metal Gear lore. So you talk about reads, should have all of them, but gonna go ahead and get opened up here at the start. Again, off the witch time, kind of stalled out where the grenade was for, going way down to close it out. And my oh my, thank goodness for a little iframe there on Cypher. Oh, and there it is, that frame one escape. So useful, wow, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got scammed, AK. We all know you spiked him right there, but <laughs> I guess Sakurai had other plans. Wow, the C4. Making Deathspade have to second guess every action he takes in the air. Once again, AK has shown a lot of different setups into that Sticky, most notably the platform tech chase. But either way, Sticky or not, we're gonna see Deathspade take the first stock. How long can he hold on to it? Not at all! The read on the read on the read. Dash back, wait it out, then wait out the spot dodge. All of it figured out here. Just one opening here into 50%. AK so good at confirming off of even a single grenade at low percent. But now, maybe an opening coming the other way. Grenade into Nair into dash attack. Probably my favorite combo with Snake. I'll say it. <laughs> and it's such a good opener at these low percents. That's made though unfazed by that, saying, yeah, I got some combos as well. Getting almost double the damage out of his exchange. But hold on, AK. He's not faced by that either. He knows that this character lives to criminal percents. And sometimes Bayo can have trouble closing a stock out. But not if you're Death Spade! Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> Again, once the shield being dropped in the witch time there, very interesting again how they're doing it. Now we finally see a grab come out here on Death Spade. I wondered when that was going to happen. If you see that Snake does not have a grenade, there is an opportunity to make it happen again. Walking back towards center stage and a combat roll going straight forward. Again, that missile had to land at some point there. So throwing off the side. How is Bayo going to get back through? Everything coming through and somehow fighting through. Oh, no way. That roll from AK opening him up into a sequence that led to his death. I feel like that could not have been on purpose. Of course, you're prone to errors in these high-pressure situations like that. But Deathspade has shown now three down throws in a row that he favors that get-up attack. AK looking to punish that at the next available opportunity. But Deathspade probably has taken stock of it as well and might choose something different. Yeah, actually caught it that time and again. 
Little spot dodge up tilt here. Apollo Kage one stock away from Loser's Finals. And again, you cannot willy-nilly attack Snake Shield 30% from that one grenade and a follow-up on top of it here. Now again, the trap's being set up. Keep an eye on that C4 right there on that platform. You talked about it, Max. We're going to go ahead and burn that one. Try to set up one more at an opportune time. It's up there again. We're burning that one, too. You can't even keep track. Yeah, I feel like he's planting it there just to dissuade Death's Fade from breaking the ice, right? Doesn't want to cross that line in the sand provided by the C4. But also, he's keen to get rid of it so he can sticky Death's Fade off the tech chase. Oh, four for four getup attacks, by the way. At this point, it seems like a nervous habit more than a conscious decision. Yeah, or just mashing buttons there, trying to figure something out here. Speaking of buttons, following through the grenade, going to close it out. Oh, that was really bad trajectory there. Bayo going to have a hard goes. Death Spade. Wow, the fear factor of the Nikita. Just buzzing around there.